to hark his style of hero for that last pick of the first phase, but it's also important specifically against EG, just because they've shown that they're happy to first pick the Shadow Fiend. They're happy to pick this win condition style hero for Nightfall on the first pick, or, sorry, the last pick of the first phase where they can then just ban out the counters to it. So it's kind of doubly as effective for Bet Boom to be able to have this, and it means that you can get rid of the Primal Beast, and whichever pushing style hero you feel less... Uh, is less capable of being countered, right? Because it essentially forces EG to either pick up Nightfall's hero in the first phase where it's counterable with the last pick of that phase, or later on into the draft when you've had more chances to ban out those style of heroes. So I think this first pick is going to go a long way for Bet Boom of having a chance if they draft correctly. Okay, um, we'll see how they're able to to shape themselves up. Of course, they also have some some extra assistance coming through from from Mag, their coach. Mm -hmm. It's going to need to do some heavy lifting, though, as we just saw Bulbar on the screen. The, uh... Of course, they also have some, some extra assistance coming through from, from Mag, their coach. Mm -hmm. It's going to need to do some heavy lifting, though, as we just saw Bulbar on the screen. The uh... How long has he been coaching EG now? I mean, it's been off and on a little bit, but he was part of that TI5 winning uh, roster as the coach. So very, very impressive coming through here. A, a real mainstay of uh, EG all the way back. I mean, I remember still that clockwork game against LGD back at TI3. And he jumped out on the stage celebrating, dancing around, and incredibly nice guy as Bulber as well. Yeah, that he is. And he's, uh, I think, like you said, he coached them at TI5 and then had some other sins coaching other teams. Looks like there was uh, Liquid, Digital Chaos at the Boston Major, and Fnatic as well at ESL1 Hamburg. So yeah, he's, uh, he's helped coach some some other members. He's been in the scene for, for quite some time as Bulber. Yeah, a lot of people were memeing on him a little bit, but that's the thing about the way that he was drafting for them before, you know, the, oh, I'm in Storm Spirit, he's going to get the Storm Spirit. He did get it a couple of days, uh, yesterday, <laughs> didn't he, when we were uh, casting their game against Takori, I want to say. Uh, but it was a great draft for it in that instance. And the thing that that does provide you as well is a lot more stability. Like, it might be one style, like one general game plan that you're playing around and not a huge hero pool, but it gives the players a lot more comfort, Hero right? You're not going to deviate away from the norm and you're not going to get massively outdrafted a lot of the time. So I know he spends a lot of time theory crafting ways to just basically get a draft that at worst is going to break even. We'll, we'll see if he can get that advantage for EG in this second draft. We are on the way. A bit different shape up here. Yeah. Are they considering they... a pudge for themselves, maybe? I think it's a consideration for sure. I mean, they're, they're targeting Arteezy a little bit more, but, I mean, we just saw that he was able to pick up the pudge for himself and do totally fine with Ten that one. So remaining. we'll uh, see what avenue they choose to go down. To We're going to try and focus on Lyle as well as Noticed with a few more of their more Evil comfort heroes. And, yeah, they just go ahead and pick up the Primal Beast for themselves. So, yeah, I don't hate this. They're just going to respond. Instant response. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not just a response. It's just instant from EG. They're like, I, you get the Primal Beast. Let's go Marcy Razor. Mm -hmm. I feel like they, they're they thinking that this lane is going to go well enough for them, assuming that it is going to be paired together, which I would say is very likely. Such a strong pairing uh, for the additional remain. movement speed, for the damage aspect, that you're going to get this super early BKB, Five so that even remain. if a Primal Beast looks to charge in, you just pop it, link him up, and you're going to be able to chase him down and... You know, you might have a little bit of that extra armor from the uproar, but it's not going to matter. Razor's going to be a, a right-clicking beast. So I wonder if now Bet Boom need to prioritize something that's going to lock the Razor in place. I don't hate the Nature's Prophet, just because A, it's a Dahak hero. Uh, it's the only one that they've won games on so far. It's 100% win rate for Bet Boom, but also just the Sprout for the laning stage. And uh, in for these first few team fights, right, it forces Razor to go into a little bit more of these movement-based items. Yeah, Razor has big issues Five with dealing with the treants as well. You early, early, early on, you don't have the AOE damage, and even as the kind of game goes on as well, until you get maybe Ag Shard, you, you will struggle with dealing with the treants. So it, it is a very, very good lane matchup. My only concern is the fact that Marcy's incredibly broken, and you could probably break this lane. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, the rebound as well, right? That's AoE damage against the tree. It's and the plasma field, so it's an okay way to deal with it, but I would say Nature's Prophet's going to get out on the better end of that trade a lot of the time, right? Just because I still think the treants don't give anywhere near enough gold for the amount of work that they're able to do. Hmm. I think a lot of it's going to come down to what the position 5 is for Seneco as well. Like, you need someone who can... You probably want a stunning support because you know that EG are going to get on top of the Nature's Prophet in this lane. It's just that there's no way you can stop it. And I think you need a hero for Seneco to, to help get some distance away when that occurs. Even, like, a Jakiro wouldn't be terrible this Five game. Uh, I think remaining. it's, you know, provides that slow, the attack speed slow, not just the movement slow, and the, the stun that you were mentioning also allows you to set up for that macro pyre if you land an amazing sprout. We've seen the, the Lich has been some team's responses to the Marcy so far. Um, I think we saw on day one when we were casting PCLGD versus Quarry, that was their answer. I've seen a couple of other teams go for it as well, um, just like taking a look at other streams, but I haven't seen like how, uh, if it's been as successful in, in the lane or just the game overall. Yeah, I think it's it's more for the game, you know, just all, all that physical damage. To Able to counter out something like the uh, the Marcy with all that physical. Again, Razor, he is very physical damage oriented, even Eye of the Storm, even though it looks like it probably should be magical. It's physical damage and reduces the armor as well, so there's double synergy there. Uh, I do like <laughs> the fact that they're now looking to target a bit more remaining. towards Nightfall's hero pool, assuming that this might be an Arteezy Razor coming through. I mean, Fly has been playing a lot more of the melee aggressive styles of position five you know we saw ogre twice yesterday we saw the sven this time around so this might be just a razor marcy in the safe lane too it's not 100 percent confirmed and it would dodge that nature's profit lane you were talking about before yep evil geniuses yeah that is a really big ban. advantage here eg have all their cores very very flexible yeah. a diverse hero pool and they've shown that arbed can just you know again carry from the mid lane doesn't need to be on the TA, it could be on a hero like the Lena, which we've seen drop off a little bit. Maybe you don't want to do it because you're up against a Primal Beast and a Nature's Prophet that can just look to connect and quickly kill. But yeah, we'll, we'll have to see how the rest of the draft shapes up. If, if EG want to go down a route of perhaps another mm, more saving style support, honestly, even the Snapfire wouldn't be terrible this game just because of the cookie out of the Sprout. It can be quite nice. Evil geniuses turn to pick. Sniper and Lesh Band out as well, so... Some Lyle-specific heroes? Yep, some some heroes that can kind of help scale into the late game. Nature's Prophet is a one, can kind of have some issues depending on some of the matchups, so... You do want to have that kind of contingency plan. And the Lesh and Sniper Ten definitely are able to help out there. Alright, so this hero really started to rising in popularity. We saw, yes, when we cast the Tundra, I believe, a secret game, Snaking played it in, in both games and, and had a lot of success with it. So I'm um, excited to see if, uh, if it's going to continue to be picked up. Yeah, and again, this EG draft is like quick-ish, right? As soon as you get that BKB, you're enabled massively. Marcy, all she needs is levels. Of course, items are great, but all she realistically needs is levels. And CM, early on, you get much more value out of the Arcane Aura just because you've got less mana to play with. So if it means that you're regenning a bigger portion of that mana pool, it's going to be great. And, you know, you fall off massively once the BKB start to come out. So EG, once again playing this aggressive style, but Bet Boom are as well. So I'm excited for this game. It means that we're going to see a lot of early rotations, a lot of skirmishes, and it's going to come down to pretty much a, a, a bunch of mechanical skill that sets these two teams apart. You would have to say EG have the slight edge there with how they've been performing so far. Yep. See what the response is going to be for Bet Boom. Of course, going to lose a, a lot of their reserve time here for the second phase, looking for their 16th, 17th. Their heroes that... I mean, you're already saying we're going to have a lot of cures and kind of the tempo being um, amplified here. Is there anything that can kind of further enable? I guess that's one that's going to one. further enable the fast pace. Are they going to pudge again? Naga Siren. Okay. Something that's a, a little slower, I suppose. And it certainly is a, a Naga Siren specialty, uh, Arteezy, with his uh, hero picks. Man, I... Remember when they had those player-specific item sets? Arteezy, Nagasarin was one of them. I think no Tail had a Meepo set as well. I want those to come back. You know, there are people that are so synonymous with a hero these days. You know, like a Collapse and his Magnus and uh, a Ma Timbersaw. You know, these sorts of things. Yopage Ember Spirit. Definitely would be nice to see re-added into the game. Uh, 
you go back now and when the heroes are popular, you just, the nostalgia effect, like you were saying yesterday with that secret draft, Poppy playing Enigma, unfortunately the nostalgia effect sometimes can, uh, isn't enough to give you a, a slight advantage. Yeah, the big whips coming out there from Old Man Puppy. <laughs> I wonder if Artis is going to be wearing his set. You know, like I've got my TI sticker on my profile because I'm egotistical as hell, but is yeah. RTZ the same? Depends if, uh, if he, honestly, I, do, I don't remember the RTZ Naga set, so I don't looks even know cool. what it looks like. Well, it's, uh, do you reckon it's cooler than a lot of the other Naga sets? No, but it's his. So, you know, okay. there, there's a little bit of pride that comes in there. Some more targeted bands, by the way, for Lyle. Uh, the Zeus coming through one of, I think, his most yeah. picked heroes leading into this event. And it was something that he picked up a lot uh, towards the start of these group stages. Pretty good response to the Naga Siren. Ways to get away from the Razor and Marcy as long as you're quick on the trigger. And we saw that he was in game number one with those Manta Dodgers being able to come out in these team fights. Just not enough to be able to uh, to deal with the onslaught that EG brought at them. Remaining. Bet mm. boom teams turn to pick. These are all things that just try and slow the game down a little bit, right? And, and deal with multiple illusions. You might have been able to go into even the Maelstrom to be able to deal with the Naga. So what's Bet Boom going to be able to have to, that deals a lot of this AoE damage that's going to be able to address Ten this somewhat? Uh, is oh, Ember's banned, actually. So Five Void Spirit doesn't remaining. feel amazing this game. Just because you, I think you're going to be able to deal enough burst. Naga Siren doesn't really like to buy into the uh, the BKB, of course. So if you're able to get on top of her, which, you know, Spirit Breaker and Nature's Prophet allows, maybe once you get the Aghanim Scepter, you can look to burst her down during that stun and uh, silence combination before she's able to get off the song. Could work. Evil geniuses turn to pick we Pop instead. All right. It's AoE damage and it's burst. <laughs> and against the Razor, it's quite nice. Um, is Conker there? Conker is in the pool. There you go. Conker's there. Invoker's banned out. Ten seconds remaining. Um, what are some other matchups? Is Puck there? Puck's there. It's not. Uh, I mean, Void Spirit again. Not terrible against the Quap. You can just use the Dissimulate to be able to dodge out the Shadow Strike. Makes the lane playable. Able to dodge out, you know, the Spirit Breaker charge, the Primal Beast initiation, get out of the Sprout quite effectively. Mm. I, I think the hero for Abed needs to be someone that is okay uh, when Bet Boom rotate because you know you're gonna have a Spirit Breaker charge you and a Nature's Prophet potentially taping in very early as well. Yeah. So the hero for Abed needs to be okay if you're gonna have multiple heroes just in your lane instantly. Yeah. Even the Quap just blinking in super aggressively, right? Maybe with a Nature's Prophet, he TP's in first, uses the uh, the Nature's Call, gets the Treants to soak up the tower damage, and then you can just full on commit onto this. So. Uh, yeah, I think Void Spirit's a fairly reasonable option here. And they go the pocket instead. Alright, something with an escape, something that provides a little bit of that AoE damage, that control. I suppose it enables Nightfall's Razor a lot more as well, right? You, If yep. you land the coil in the early game before those BKBs come out, then uh, that Static Link is going to give you so much more value. But it still, to me, is a bit of an issue. I know Bet Boom have gone this aggressive early game style, but it feels like Evil Geniuses are going to really fall off in impact, particularly from... Uh, Fly and Arbed once those BKBs do start to become available on uh, on Beth Boom's side. It's just a question of how early they can get the BKBs here from Beth Boom. If they're able to have a, a really strong lane, which their lanes are set up for success at the moment. I mean, Queen of Pain into the park matchup. It's going to trade relatively even, but, but Lyle should not lose that lane. Nature's Prophet's going to have a good time versus the Razor. I'm a bit... <laughs> no, sorry, I was oh, just laughing happened? at the big zoom on Bulba's beard. Uh, what, what were you saying, sorry? I... So, Corp's going to have a pretty good time into Pock. I mean, Primal Beast is, is a Primal Beast. It's going to be interesting to see if the Crystal Maiden can kind of help address some of the issues in the lane with just being able to kind of slow that hero down. My real big concern, though, is honestly how this safe lane is going to go for Bet Boom. I think they, I really wanted them to have like a defensive support that can stop EG from playing really aggressive and getting onto the, uh, getting onto the Nature's Prophet. I don't think the Silencer does that. I think, in fact, the Silencer is going to be food for that lane. So I'm a bit worried on how the safe lane is going to shape up for Bet Boom. I mean, he's just going to need to play really far back, right? Or actually not even in the lane at all. Look to go for a lot of these. Uh... Uh, play a lot more about on the camps, right? Make sure they're unblocked, look to get the pulls back, make sure that it's easy for uh, Dehuk to be able to get that early farm. You can also just use the Treants as that, like, pseudo-melee support hero in front of you to soak up a lot of the damage, but, you know, it, it, 
they've got wins on this hero, right? They want to go back to what's been successful for them so far. We'll see if they can get that success. Again, Beppu really need to get some wins under their belts. Continuing to lose out on opportunities here. Position where it could be very, very difficult to come back from. Can, I want to be uh, up to your last game and, and being forced to 2-0 against a, a tricky opponent. Can a I just say, pressure on you. I read RTZ like a book. He is reading, uh, wearing half of his own Naga set. <laughs> just, uh, you know, you got to make sure that you're repping the Ooh, own set there. I think it's the, the armor and the tail that he's wearing right now. But there are some other cool things like the, the jellyfish hat that he's uh, looking to be part of. He's going for the mix here. A little bit of an immortal as well. It's a nice mix and match. <laughs> Whenever I try and mix and match, I'm like, oh, is this color scheme completely <laughs> off? I mean, it, like, I, I, I'm sure it looks hideous. Same sort of thing with where I wear clothes. It just, uh, <laughs> they never seem to match. It never works out. Dude, what is going on? <laughs> oh my god, I'll hold that thought in case anyone just gets chased down. We got three for one in the bounty rooms, again favoring AG. Uh, <laughs> the Hawk is just sending trains inside the base, trying to see if we can get a Cory sniper. Uh, no, the pings came out and they all sent the Corys back inside the base, or back inside the fountain, I should say, so he's, he's not going to get any freebies. Smart. Very, very smart. Uh, you've got the Spirit Breaker, by the way, playing down bottom here with the Nature's Prophet, okay. so at least that's a little bit more tanky. Also going into the Boots of Speed, of course, just to be able to escape from any kind of static link attempt, and well, they want to try and get it in onto him as soon as possible, but Roger's happy to tank that up if it means the Hark isn't the main priority. And of course now, static link a lot weaker. So it doesn't last uh, eight seconds at all levels, just the five seconds to begin with. Yeah. We'll see how difficult it is for them to be able to deal with the trains. Just you've got them running at night for Chris trying to see us as well. It's not going to be easy for them to play into the Hawk. Incredibly comfortable on the hero. See if it's going to be enough for them to get that success. I think a lot of this game is going to be off the back of Lalo. It's looking like a pretty goddamn good Queen of Pain game. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like a draft from Bet Boom though that's able to coordinate fairly well together as well. You know, again, three ways to be able to dive in super aggressively, even four if you're going to count the quap. Well, actually, Roger though, he might have gone a little bit too deep in this lane and he hasn't eaten the tango, so he does it a little bit too late. Might have been able to survive that last right click if he just ate it a bit sooner. So, first blood being given over to this lane that we said might have a bit of issues, but not if you're getting that early kill. Not at all. And now you've got the level twos to play with as well. They didn't have that prior, so the fact that you're already getting killed without that extra ability to play with the lane, it's going to be very difficult. See the try and help out with the creep equilibrium. Should be shoving out into Dai's favor, and now it's going to be up to Crit and what he can do to try and maintain this. Oh, very clever by Arbit. Just uh, using his illusory orb in the mid lane to be able to bait out Lal to. Eh, maybe not be quite as efficient at getting these last hits. Steals one of the water runes, but Lyle doesn't commit heavily enough, so he's still able to secure the top one. Really keeping the harassment up. I mean, we're seeing with the uh, the skill build here on Lara as well. Most of the time on the Queen of Pain, you look to get at least two points into the Shadow Strike, but not against the Puck, just because you're able to dodge it out almost every single time. He just maxes out the Scream of Pain, looks to try and get a, a few more harassments in onto the puck through that aspect, and just look to play this as a bit more of a, a farming lane as opposed to a, a trading and lane dominator style. The off lane for Beppum. So Seneca might be in a little bit of trouble at the moment. Flying Arteezy, considering about chasing down this answer. The soys aren't going to be enough from Fly really to get a lot of damage into Seneco, so we'll be chilling. But they're actually going to go back for the Primal Beast instead. Notice taking a lot of damage, Frostbite to hold him down into place, and Arteezy will be able to pick up the kill. Important to get that kill, just that extra little bit of bonus, giving the Arcane Aura over to the team means that, uh, you know, this is a puck. This is someone that, again, wants to be trading farm with the Queen of Pain, so something as simple as just having the little bit of that extra mana for the laning stage is going to provide you a lot of uh, trading potential. And lane Roger almost going down. Forced to TP back to base. Of course, he can always rejoin thanks to the charge, but 
see the potential of this lane and how aggressive EG can play. This is now going to free up crit to be able to get a hard camp pull. Reset the equilibrium and out with the wave pushed all the way back. This will give them that opening now to use the full distance to maybe get a lot of the damage stolen from the static lane and potentially get a kill. Yeah, charge having to be used all the way from base, so... It uh, isn't going to result in too much here. Might be lucky enough to be able to claim the last hit, but not quite. Nightfall just throwing up the high five. In the meantime, with the lane influence like that, it means that uh, Abed had that bottom water rune secured for himself. Crit even able to claim the bounty rune on the Radiant side, so all things going well for EG right now. Really feels like we're going to be looking at Lal and, and what he can do for Bet Boom this game. Oh, well, top side. So without the side. So there you go. He's going to be chased down. Arteezy in a very early level up in the ensnare. Notice he's going to be able to push him away, keeping Seneco alive, and now he's on to fly. I'm putting the Frostbite's only going to hold him back for the moment. But it has done its job at least mitigating some of the damage from the trample. It lean Arbed. Might be able to get a solo kill on Lal. One more right click, but the blink to disjoint that last attack. That's going to be a lot of creeps going underneath the tower here. Are oh, they going to instantly look to push that one in? Not necessarily trying to make a rotation just yet, but just scouting out any kind of TP rotations that might be looking to come back in and be able to soak this one up. He's level 5, and he's going to have a good amount of uh, experience advantage. Already halfway towards level 6, might even get his uh, get that before Lyle's able to come back into the lane. Bottom lane, they're onto Dahak. Charge holding the back, but Nightfall's still going to pursue on. Nice body blocks. Awkward use of the blocks. Nightfall unable to really get out of the sprout for the moment. I mean, Arteezy, you mentioned the uh, early point in the ensnare early on. This is what you need to do with a Crystal Maiden lane, right? You, you just need to make sure that you're dominating it. So you have one of the strongest laners out there, so... Any sort of opportunity that you get to be able to get those early kills, you've got to take them with both hands. And, well, they've been able to secure one on this top side, but I'm sure that they were hoping to be able to connect onto Seneco there as they make the dive on Arteezy. And Frostbite and Snare. Nothing you can really do to play around with it on Noticed. Taking a lot of damage from the tower. So Primal Beast is going to be sent back. In more bottom lane as well. Crit's going to be in with a TP cancel. Roger won't be able to escape. The Hawk's going to kind of put his body up forward here to try and act as a, a protection against the Spirit Breaker. And that's the other aspect as well, just against the Primal Beast specifically up top. The, uh, the Ensnare really providing that little bit of extra damage mitigation potential, not just for the aggressive aspects too. So, the presence of mind not just going into the standard cookie cutter build. As Arbid just consistently, he wants to enable himself to make these rotations happen. He's holding on to the regen rune, and he wants to push out this lane as much as possible. Even Arteezy committing a few of his illusions into the mid lane to force Lyle to want to stay here. I wonder if that'll cause some sort of rotation to happen elsewhere that opens up a kill for the side lanes, or even if it means that uh, Arbid's going to be enabled to rotate himself. But he actually had his uh, regen cancelled by Lyle. He goes oh, for the dream coil. 30 does very deep. They've got the Sonic Wave as well. He's going to be able to juke it out. As Arbed still will end up going down. Three heroes behind the tier one tower. Well, that's a big kill for Bet Boom to be able to find as Arbed just gets a little bit too aggressive. Yeah, I think uh, he was feeling confident playing around that power rune, but again, good response coming through, and this is what happens with this uh, Bat Boom draft that they've gone for here. So much mobility around the map, didn't even use the Spirit Breaker for that, realizing that Roger probably needed to be up top to prevent uh, any more deaths on to Noticed if uh, you were going to make that rotation through on Seneco. That's what you need, though. You need to get Lyle off to a good start. Of course, struggled in the lane against the, the Arbed Puck. Very impressed with what he's been able to do early on. Might be in trouble again on Arbed. They're going to have the silence. Pops nearby as well to get the damage coming through. Can they bring him down before the Jorn? Arbed just surviving. Would have been another big kill back to back on the Puck if they found it. Yeah, luckily enough, able to claim that power in for himself, even just being given over the salve, the tango as well. Fly acting like that uh, that position six, effectively. He's in trouble top. Yeah, Bepum gonna bring both support to try and slow down the Naga. Nice dodge. Now, but it mitigates some damage coming up from the onslaught. That might be enough to get RTZ back to the tower. 
even just going for that early-ish point in the wind lace. Of course, it helps with your farming patterns as well, being able to get between them, but just that little bit of extra gap creation against the likes of the Spirit Breaker, against the Primal Beast, gonna be real handy. So 3v1 commitment and Arteezy still doesn't die. And look at what they're, how it's opening up the map for them now. Nightfall is gonna be able to drag the wave down bottom. You've got creep speeding into the tower, so someone's going to be forced to address this. It would be Roger to try and soak some of the experience. And meanwhile, mid lane as well. Arbed's also trying to cut another person move mid to, to try and leave this lane from being vacant. Roger! Oh, crit just gets him right. Oh, yes, Samasi. Never in doubt to be able to catch up. I don't know why you expected anything else, to be honest. This is just what the Marcy does, dominates the early game, dominates once you get up to that level 6 and has the potential to scale from that support role. Kinda nutty, and uh, well, crit, he's not gonna be hitting too many creeps, but still important for him to buy that Quelling Blade, the Magic Stick. He's gonna have them coming out on the courier shortly, just because they feel like they might have Nature's Prophet issues, even though all lanes going very well for EG right now. So the importance though from either side, looking to try and set up for the power runes. Notice with the charge, Arbid will be able to get out of danger, but Fly doesn't have the same capability. So Bepu get a kill onto the position 5, and importantly, they also secure the power rune for Lal. It's still four people rotating just for a single kill, though, and a regen rune, it's nice, but you want to be able to make moves a lot more aggressively, and regen doesn't really do that. Regen more likely allows you to stay in the lane unless your name is Storm Spirit. Time. Nightfall was sitting back farming. Arteezy moved back a little bit more into the jungle. That uh, previous kill attempt may be spooking him a little bit. Of course, Arbit, you don't really need to do much to farm. Very easy still on the puck to be able to shove that lane out with the illusory orb, but someone's going to need to come and address this. If no one TPs mid, it yeah, means they're making a play. With the... Bash. Yep, Lyle's going to try and pull oh. him up, but no even use to the sonic wave they don't get lucky with the bash as well very unfortunate there from bet boom yeah the 17 percent really doesn't feel like it whenever you're playing with it does it but enemy team able to luck out but yeah this is what i mean right they they knew that the movement was coming they set up defensively with crit there able to provide him that little bit of extra stun the slow is coming through because arbed was always going to make this move always trying to push that mid lane in use the siege creep to its fullest potential puck not the greatest pusher but if you're able to the siege creep to its maximum it means that you're already going to have a mid t1 tower on half hp Just trying to see the angle for bed boom what do they do 4000 deficit it seems like they need to continue forcing the issue with plays where they're looking at top you know, the spirit breaker charges and, and the hawk tp's in so maybe this could be the setup up top if they can find rtz in the jungle mm -hmm. The world coverage is okay. You know, that, that cliff ward has stayed up for quite some time. And they're gonna look to connect together around a similar sort of timing. Yep, here we go. They get the charge through. Will they be able to land this? Doesn't have the song. Notice is in. Pulverize as well. They don't want to use the sonic wave and they won't be forced to as RTZ. Can't use Jukes. the song defensively. No way with them Jukes of the Illusions. They will finally be able to catch up. A big, big kill for Bet Boom to find. You'd love to be able to convert this onto the T1 tower now as well. You would, but in the meantime, that's exactly what EG did, right? They realized that he wasn't really in a position to be able to be saved. He didn't have the song, so there wasn't that great turnaround potential. In the meantime, you take the T1 tower bot, you continue to shove in mid. Someone's going to need to respond to this, and uh, you might lose your own T1 in exchange, but it's going to cost a Hark being up here without the uh, Wrath of Nature to be able to contribute to any other team fights. So I think they're still okay with this on EG. We can see Beppu make a very similar play shortly, though. You, get, you, you didn't have to commit Sonic Wave. You have the Global Silence with Seneco getting enough experience now from the mid wave. So I think Beppu can really look to make another play here. Uh, you can't continue to slow this game down. Uh, Naga will, without a doubt, win the late game. That's for sure. You need to make sure that you're you're getting into those BKBs like we were talking about as quickly as possible, but you are starting to get those Naga issues, aren't you? It's only 500 gold away from the Maelstrom onto Hark with his Nature's Prophet to accelerate that farm a little bit to deal with all of the illusions, but 
Outside of that, there really isn't too many people that are going to be able to contend with it. Primal Beast already starting his build up into the BKB, but I mean, that's, that's really the only one that's having any indication towards getting it in the next five or so minutes. <laughs> Dude, knife off. Why are you going to do it to him, man? The scan thing, I want to scout out this smoke down bottom on Bat Boom, then he ducks into the tree line, gives them their own voice line as well. <laughs> no, just song of the wounds. Well, maybe go for an easy kill on to fly. Is it easy? I mean, it's under a tower. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, job. Okay. Crit's ready. Crit wants to make the play. Team just wants to make the play as well. Onslaught into the middle, tries to move to the right side, but he doesn't catch up to our bed. Global Science is going to be able to cover the Primal Beast for the moment, but they haven't gotten really anything out of it. So Nightfall has a free fight to tip into the middle. He can chase down the Primal Beast with ease. Crit's going to be nearby just in case they require him. The bonus movement speed might be enough from notice at the moment, though. Onslaught back up as well, so... In fact, he'll be able to make it to the higher ground, but EG, knowing the Global Silence is used, they can look to now get a tier 1 tower of their own. Very slightly off with the Dream Call there on Arbed, otherwise that would have been a dead Primal Beast. You're still probably going to, like you said, lose the, uh, the tier 1 tower. Even Arteezy looking to commit under a tier 2 to potentially try and take out Seneco, realizing that there's no threat of the Global Silence coming through. They'll still take the tower. But it's the mental damage that's more important. Just realizing that we've got the security to be able to invade underneath your towers this early on into the piece. It's uh, a lot less deaths, to be honest, than I was expecting early on. But I think that plays into EG's hands favorably. Yep, without a doubt. Without a doubt, indeed, Bepu need to continue to push the tempo with a lineup that has a 5,000 deficit. It's not going to be easy at all. We'll try and target down Nightfall. Unfortunately for the BKB, it's... A little bit too far away on the Corey, so we won't have this to potentially stay alive as Bat Boom find a big kill. Big kill indeed. He was at the top of the net worth charts at the time, with the gold being lost from the death. And well, he'll eventually have the BKB delivered to him, so probably won't be looking to happen again. Still, I like the amount of emphasis they're putting onto them. They're actually committing here pretty deeply just to try and get the kill onto fly, and will it oh, result no, in one? Not like this. <laughs> oh no! Coil into freezing field and all of a sudden EG members will turn it back around and they'll get Seneco as well. It'll be a slow chase. In fact, he'll go for a TP out and he might be able to make it, but crit just in time to be able to stop oh, that. No, oh, no, don't give him the balloon oh, animal. Oh, no. Oh, oh. What's ah, going on? Oh, Come on, on my brother. Playing. He's got to deny himself. <laughs> what did I just watch? <laughs> Oh, on the other side of the map, Arteezy gets a solo kill on Talal. This is... The yeah, European really smiley really face really in the old chat as well. I bet uh, we're going to oh, have some words oh, because uh, I mentioned yesterday that I don't have enough EG players in my fantasy. I bring him in today and he makes plays like that. I'm cursed. I'm cursed, man. It's not just the predictions. It's also just these little predictions that I'm making for my own points. He died the points up and Nightfall is just going to get some more, some more gold as well. I suppose you can call them boins. Scary territory, isn't it? 8,000 deficit at 17 minutes in. Mm -hmm. They want to it's open up more, more of the map. I mean, this is the thing with an Naga Siren, right? Tier 2 towers, they're useful for sure. You don't have amazing ways to be able to take them just yet, though. You just want to open up more and more camps for Arteezy to safely farm. Not even necessarily with his own hero, but just to make it more obvious when you're rotating to try and kill him, right? Because if you don't have a tier 1 tower top, then it just takes that extra 5-10 seconds. So that's why EG, they're looking to commit quite heavily here onto Lal. Grin reads his mind like a book. That he does indeed. And on the other side of the map as well, Arteezy got a free kill onto Tahak. The hell? Who's trying to farm with it. And yep, yeah, they're going to call it. Bed boom, see no angle back into this 17 minute GG tap out. There's a lineup from them, needed to have the control in the early game, and unfortunately for Bed boom, they were just too far behind. That is uh, a low amount of kills, I gotta say, and that is exactly what Bed boom were not playing for. That, I think, takes now the record for the lowest time for the game. I think it was around 19 and a half minutes previously, so EG again just showing their dominance in this game number two. This is uh, a really scary team to be going up against. And 
also exciting to see with the adaptation and how they're able to deal with the primal beast i mean where there's a lot of teams 20 teams that we're seeing how the each side kind of believes they can address